Convertibles have a long tradition at Mercedes. The sense of freedom that comes with having the sun in your face and the wind in your hair. For decades, Mercedes has built convertibles that combine luxury and elegance. So the new E-Class convertible has a lot to live up to. It must meet the standards set by its predecessors and appeal to the emotions and sensibilities of today's discerning driver. Wolfgang Brehm of Daimler explains that the car's designers wanted to build a convertible that captures the customer's heart. The classic fabric roof, for instance, emphasizes the car's elegant silhouette. Even with the roof raised, it clearly signals that this is a convertible. Of course, a convertible is a real convertible only when the roof is down. But the car's body is unmistakably an E-Class Mercedes, elegant and at the same time sporty. Brem says the look was intended to be expressive, so the designers gave the car a distinctive front end, characterized by sharply pointed shapes. Brem also draws attention to the subtle crease that crosses the hood, and notes that a similar crease can be found on the trunk lid. The trunk lines have been kept low and blend easily with the car's elegant shape. The large and shapely taillights feature modern LED technology. As one would expect from a luxury convertible, the roof can be lowered and raised at the press of a button. That takes about 20 seconds and can be done even at speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour. The car also introduces a Mercedes innovation called AirCap that significantly reduces wind turbulence for all four occupants when the roof is down. It works with a retractable airfoil above the windshield and a windscreen between the rear seats. The system works remarkably well and also diminishes wind noise, even in the rear seats. Our test car was a 250 CDI, which delivered plenty of power even at low engine speeds. The diesel's fuel consumption is rated at 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers, though most drivers will probably burn one or two liters more in normal conditions. The convertible has all the safety features found in the Mercedes E-Series Coupe, as well as most of the engines. They include three diesels with between 170 and 231 horsepower, and four gasoline engines ranging from 184 to 388 horsepower. From a design point of view, Mercedes aimed for a unified, harmonious look. Wolfgang Brem says the car's interior picks up design cues found on the outside. The diamond-shaped air vents, for instance, echo the form of the headlights. That kind of attention to detail is found not just in the design, but in the quality of its execution as well. Instrumentation and controls are easy to use and made of attractive materials. To make top-down driving even more comfortable, the car is available with the optional air scarf system that funnels heated air through the seat to the occupant's neck. Brem stresses that Mercedes has built a full-fledged four-seat convertible. The beautifully styled front seats are kept lean and yet very comfortable. And the same form is then applied to the rear seats. In the rear seat, Brem demonstrates how, as soon as he fastens his seat belt and the car is started, the rear seat headrests and the wind barrier automatically rise into position. The new Cabrio completes the E-Series range of models and proves to be a worthy successor to earlier convertibles. It offers a comprehensive range of standard features, safety equipment and powerful yet efficient engines. Prices in Germany start at 45,815 euros.
BMW has polished the design and expanded the choice of engines for its lineup of 3 Series models. The coupe is now available with 5 gasoline and 4 diesel motors. And the palette of choices is also extended with new, smaller entry-level engines. The new 3 Series comes standard with a 6-gear manual transmission. British race car constructor McLaren has been a fixture on the Formula One circuit since 1966. Now McLaren is unveiling the MP412C, seen here in camouflage paint, as its first high-performance road model. The company plans on building up to 1,000 units of the mid-engine two-seater next year and selling them worldwide. Even though the weather in Germany isn't quite hospitable yet for open roof driving, Volvo is already in the starting gate with revamped models, ready to allow drivers to savor springtime on the roads. The compact C30 offers that sports car feel, while the C70 Coupe convertible caters to more elegant tastes. Volvo's Bernhard Bauer says the C30 is the entry-level Volvo, aimed at younger clients who don't shy away from leaving the beaten path, who are ready to try something new, more removed from classic options towards a new product, and join the Volvo League. We tested the C30 in its sportier R design. On the outside, its body is completely painted in one color. Fog lights are standard equipment. The radiator grill and exterior mirror housings feature a brushed chrome look. The interior is simple with a sporty feel. And twin chrome exhausts are a sure sign that this C30R is packing the model's biggest available engine. And even with all the sporty trim, the C30's rear design has a long history. As Bernhard Bauer points out, on the back end you see clearly the reference to the beautiful P1800 from the 1960s and 70s. It's a conscious reference by Volvo so that people make the connection looking at the back end. It's a tip of the hat to history. We tested the top end diesel model with 180 horsepower. It goes from 0 to 107.7 seconds and is listed as using 6.2 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers. The R design costs 3,000 euros extra. In return, the modified frame and more responsive steering provide an intense driving experience. The C70's design has also been changed to emphasize the car's elegant details. The front end has a more streamlined wedge-like shape the short overhang in front and the extended back end combined with a long wheelbase give this convertible its classic sporting lines. And watching the hard top fold down reveals a small marvel of effective use of space. Of course, the downside is that there's not too much room left in the trunk. Volvo has redesigned the interior, which now features understated yet exclusive surfaces and elegant details. Bauer says Volvo didn't build this car with only pure performance in mind. This is an elegant car, but under the hood, it also offers a complete range of engines. From the high-end performance of a sports car to the entry-level 2-liter diesel, it's a very interesting and fuel-efficient car. We opted for that small diesel variant of the C70. With its 136 horses, it accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 11 seconds and says it uses an average 6 liters per 100 kilometers.
Volvo offers another diesel with 180 horsepower and three gasoline engines, the biggest with 230 horses with the C70. And of course, Volvo is especially known for its high safety standards. The Swedish automaker was the first in the world to introduce AlcoGuard as a standard feature. It's attractive, especially for rental companies and firms with their own fleets. The car takes a breathalyzer test from drivers before the key can be turned. The gadget measures the alcohol levels in the driver's breath. If the test is positive, the car simply won't start. The system to protect drivers from themselves costs 850 euros. Whenever Herbert Joksch heads out in his BMW 501, it's as if time had stood still. The retired Munich policeman bought and lovingly restored the car that impressed him the most during his many years of service. Dubbed the Baroque Angel by Germans, the BMW 501 helped the Munich police catch the bad guys in the 1950s and 60s. Joach says in the early days, nobody could shake this car off. In daily service, this car was the officer's life insurance, so to speak. BMW unveiled the 501 in 1951. It was a conservative car based on 1930s design. Its six-cylinder engine was likewise a pre-war invention. The Baroque Angel was also a star in Izar 12, a TV crime series. Then as now, only real policemen were permitted to drive the cars with the blue lights. The Munich police had 17 Baroque Angels. After an average of 10 years and 130,000 driven kilometers, they were then taken out of service. As Habert's photo album shows, the officers were proud of their job and proud of the car they drove. Joach says when you were standing outside on Marienplatz for seven hours at a time, directing traffic as a traffic cop, and then some fellow policeman drove through the square in their Baroque Angel, all you could do was wave to him briefly. It wasn't a feeling of envy, but your dearest wish at that moment was to one day be allowed to sit in that car. The BMW 501 was an expensive high-end sedan. Its construction was highly praised, but the six-cylinder engine was troublesome at first and tarnished the car's reputation. The undulating chrome detailed body was expensive to build, but once in service, the frame was able to push pretty much anything aside that stood in its way. BMW never made a profit with the 501, something the few units for the Munich police couldn't change. It was a green field of luxury, including on the inside. Nothing but the best for Munich's finest. And in the days before cell phones, the Lawrence radio was often a decisive advantage against the crooks. The two-liter six-cylinder engine under the curvaceous hood mustered 65 and later 72 horsepower. Top speed was 145 kilometers per hour. At the time, an Opel Capitaine was no faster, and hardly anyone had a Mercedes 300 SL anyway. Freshly nabbed offenders could at least appreciate the easy entrance into the big BMW's roomy interior. When Herbert Joksch and his colleague Jochen Meyer drive through Munich today, it's as if the old days were back. Drivers still respectfully make room for the old BMW. 
Plenty of youngsters in the 1960s probably became policemen only in the hope of driving one. In any case, no successor model has ever equaled the 501's lasting legacy with the Munich police. 